Well, hi folks. Welcome to Recreation Destinations and this week's episode. And this week we're continuing the RV Electrical 101 series. So if you haven't seen the first episode, uh, check it out. I'll put a little click link right up here. And uh, that's got a lot of information for you about basic RV electrical stuff. Now today we're going to concentrate more on just the 12 volt systems and we're going to concentrate on batteries and some options to help keep your batteries charged while you are dry camping. So you found the perfect setting for your RV. A babbling brook and nobody around for miles. This is what RVers and campers seek most of all. You build your campfire and you prepare for a long, enjoyable vacation. important part of battery charting is how to know how much of your battery you have used while you've been unplugged. And so to explain that, let's use some props. These kind of props. Check this out. This little puppy right here is a standard RV light bulb. This little guy is about 25 watts. So when we're talking about using up what life is in your battery or battery bank, when you are dry camping. Now, perhaps we should go into a little bit of our RV terminology. If you're new to this, dry camping is camping in an RV without any kind of hookups. So no electricity, no water, no sewer. We're going to use nice round numbers today to keep things simple. So let's say that you have one battery in your RV. Now one thing we didn't mention last week is that really you only get to use about half of the amp hours on a lead acid battery and still maintain a reasonable longevity in that battery's life. So let's say we've got a 200 amp hour battery and let's say 100 amp hours of that battery are usable. If it's an emergency situation, or maybe you only do it once, or twice, then you can get away with using some more. And I definitely wouldn't go without uh, something I needed in order to not do that little bit of damage that running that battery down below the 50% level is going to do. I wouldn't go sit around at night in the dark. So we mentioned this little incandescent bulb. It's about 25 watts. Now this is going to use up 25 watts every hour. Let's say you've got four of these lights on, which is going to be 100 watts for every hour. Say four hours. So now we've got 400 watts of usage just for these four lights that you have. So if you divide 400 by 12 volts, because these are 12 volt light bulbs, you end up with about 33 amps of power usage. Now again, we said we had a 200 amp hour battery, but we only want to use about 100 amps of that. So right there in those four hours, those four bulbs have used up one third of your electrical capacity in that battery. Oftentimes RVs come with a simple battery monitor like this. But as we talked last week, these indicators are a decent idea to give you a general battery level on your RV. If you really want specific information, you're going to have to either do some math or invest in a better electrical monitoring system, such as this one. And since this monitor is actually part of my solar charging system, this is a, as good of an opportunity as any just to segue into solar charging 
So a solar charging system can be as simple as one small panel, such as this one we have on our truck, wired directly to the batteries. And this is mainly just to keep the truck batteries charged. It could also be used in an RV if you had it in storage and you wanted to keep your batteries to uh, boost it up to their maximum all the time. Uh, it generally work, works really well in sunny locations. So this unit has a built-in voltage regulator so it doesn't overcharge the batteries. But if your goal is to regularly replace energy that you've used out of your system daily with a charging system, then you're going to have to go with a full-blown photovoltaic system. That system is going to consist of photovoltaic panels like these, of which we have 800 watts, one or more charge controllers, and the proper gauge wire running from the photovoltaic panels to those charge controllers, a battery bank, and in our case the battery bank consists of four 225 amp 6 volt batteries wired in series parallel. If you don't understand series parallel wiring, I will again refer you to video number one. But this little guy is the brains of the outfit. Not only can it tell you what the batteries and charging system are doing, but it will allow you to adjust all kinds of different things. Right now it's displaying my battery voltage and the amperage going into the batteries from the charging system. With the push of a button it will tell me my input and output of the charge controller itself. This display is just like the gas gauge in your car. Notice it's saying 100% full instead of giving you a light that says a third or a half or something that's kind of generally obtuse. And probably this screen is my favorite, amp hours from full. This is fantastic. If the previous screen was like a gas gauge, this one's like an odometer. It tells you exactly how many miles you have left before you're out of gas. Another one of my favorite things about this particular charging unit and controller setup is the ability to charge an auxiliary battery bank. It only enters this mode after it has completed the primary battery bank charging cycle, and it would be useful for motorhomes, say, to keep the chassis batteries topped off or perhaps to use that extra energy to recharge a deep cycle boat battery or something like that that you had uh, along with you on your camping trip. If you have several days or a week of cloudy weather, the unit can tell you when the battery was actually fully charged by the solar. The minimum battery volts, maximum battery volts, how many amp hours you've charged, how many amp hours uh, you've used out of the batteries, the battery temperature, all kinds of things like that. There are many adjustable parameters that you would set up in the menu initially and some that you can modify as you go along. So the bottom line here is that a quality photovoltaic system can extend your dry camping time nearly indefinitely. As a matter of fact, I know some people that stay off grid for months and months at a time in their RV. Which will bring us to our next piece of equipment and that is an inverter talked about converters or battery charges already in the first part of this series and now we are talking about something different called an inverter. An inverter takes 12 volt direct current electricity and turns that into 120 volt alternating current. And we are going to talk about inverters and try to finish up this RV electrical series next week. So thanks for tuning in guys. Tune in next week for that episode. If you have any specific questions uh, ask them in the comment section below the video here. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel for more videos. And by all means, share this around if you know somebody that would also like to know more about how their RV electrical or any RV systems work. Feel free to browse our other videos by clicking on the Recreation Destinations link. That will take you to our homepage and you can see all kinds of how-to videos and also links to our website. Peel out of here.com. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.